Hi again then guys and welcome to another special projects replica build and this time we are replicating a very very popular version of the Mitsubishi Evo, in particular the Evo 8, a legendary version even of this car, the FQ400. Top of the tree, 405 horsepower, 175 miles per hour, 0 to 60 in about three and a half seconds. In real life, pretty insane, and as I said, it's a legendary performance car. I personally prefer the Evo 8 FQ400 over the Evo 10 FQ400. The newer one's cool, but this one just has that more hardcore, no-nonsense, no-frills edge. Now, as far as the visuals, it's a pretty simple build to do. Now, I'd recommend having the GT-style 12-spoke wheels. You've got a couple of those to choose from. Some are more deeper set. Those are the ones that I've gone for, the lower set of the two. And as far as the colour... You could go for different options. I've gone for the kind of black and grey layout that most of the pictures on Google, for instance, of the FQ400s tend to be in. So the grey that I've gone for is my most used grey by far, which is called X-Power Grey. It's a metallic colour and it comes from the MGTF. I think it's a great looking grey. And then for the rims, I've gone for Ebony Black, which is a very deep, dark black, almost a solid black, but not quite, which comes from the Jaguar S-Type. And again, that's one of my most used colours. So that's what I've done for the visuals. Of course, you could go for totally different colours if you wanted to. And apart from that, it's pretty close to the real car. Unfortunately, we can't give it the bigger chin splitter, and that's really a shame because it looks fantastic on the FQ400, but it's not a premium car, so it's just not an option. So, next up, of course, we'll cover the mechanical side of things, and it's a relatively simple build to do this one, and then, as we usually do, we'll take it out on a racetrack, of course, to see what exactly this monster is capable of. Now, as you can see, it is not rounded off. PP wise, not to 510 or 500. If you are going to round it off, it would be easier to get to 510 than 500 with keeping the real car's specs, of course. So if you want it to be accurate, you kind of have to negate that. If you want to race it, then you'll have to build it differently. So that's down to you, of course. Now, as far as the tyres, I've uprated it to sports softs instead of sports hards. Again, that's down to personal preference. As far as suspension, I've dropped the ride height to 125 front and rear. Springs I've increased just a little bit to 560 and 490. Dampers and anti-roll to 2, which is of course lower than the standard 3 which it comes in, but still higher than the stock suspension. We've got neutral camber and tow, as always. If you want to give it some, that's down to you. For the gearbox on this one, it actually apparently runs the same ratios as the normal gearbox. So unless my source is wrong on that, then... That seems to be the case. Keeps it simple at least, which is nice. I've gone for the twin plate clutch to deal with the increased power. As far as the centre split, technically it's probably supposed to be more of a 50-50. I've gone for 30-70, but of course it's down to you. And as far as the centre diff, you could go for just the active yaw control, the standard Mitsubishi system. I've opted to upgrade it to the race diff in effect and then I've gone for as you can see the lowest initial torque then with the highest acceleration and lowest braking settings. That suits my driving style but of course it might not suit someone else's. So as always test it, try it out if you want something different feel free to change it of course. Then as far as power it's actually really simple. You don't even need a power limiter on this one you just need an oil change, a high RPM turbo and the uprated exhaust manifold. There's probably other ways of getting that 405 horsepower of the real car, so feel free to fit other ones if you want to, but that just seemed fitting, at least from my point of view. And again, as far as the weight, it's very simple. Do nothing to it, because again, according to the specs that I found, it weighs 1,410 kilos, so unless that's wrong, which it could be, then that keeps it pretty simple. So, as I said, this is one of the simplest replicas we've done. It's more of an update, even, to the existing Evo's numbers on the game. So all that remains, of course, is to actually test it on the track to see what it can do. 
Now, of course, you would expect this to be a great track car, a great performance car. That's what it is in real life, and it is. Now, as far as racing goes, I haven't raced it, to be honest. As I said, it's not really intended for that. It's not rounded off to 500 pp even, but it definitely does have potential there. If you do want to round it up to, say, four, or 510, even not 410, <laughs> or 525, or whatever level you want it to be at, maybe downgrade it to 505, perhaps, then it definitely has potential. You're already working with great performance, and all we've done really is just made it that bit better, which is essentially what the FQ400 does to what is already a great car. So overall, if you do decide to use this tune or some variation of it, I hope of course you have a lot of fun with it, and potentially find it useful for racing or seasonal events as well. And if you enjoyed this, of course, there are plenty, literally hundreds, more replicas and custom tunes in the playlist for this series at the end of the video. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.